So today I'm going to be speaking about my journey. I've kind of been following this way of life for over a year now. Had some good successes and some failures. I'll start actually from when I was a lot younger. Um, so my background is when I was a child, I was born as a C-section. I'm not sure what that does with the microbiome, which is very complex. I was of normal weight until I was in about grade one. I believe around grade two, I started gaining weight. By middle school, I was definitely overweight, maybe obese. Once I hit about grade nine, I started a journey of yo-yo dieting. It was about the first time I tried to lose weight actively. When I was at school, I was regularly bullied about my weight. These are just some photos of when I was younger. As you can see, I was never the skinniest and my weight kind of just fluctuated a little bit, went up, then went down, then went up quite a bit again. So what did I eat when I was younger? I'm Italian of background and I love my nonna and she loves me too, so I'd always ask her to make me pasta. So being a good Italian boy, I'd eat pasta very regularly. At home, we'd normally have low fat foods. I'd eat a lot of packaged foods just because I never really liked cooking and I found it was just easier to get something out of a box and heat it up, especially sometimes after school, I'd always be really, really hungry. One of my favorite snacks, I used to love just getting rice cakes and spreading some margarine on top of them and putting them in the microwave and, you know, it had the heart foundation tick of approval, so it's got to be healthy, yeah? Um, and that ties in with many other foods like meat pies, they, you know, had the heart tick of approval, so I ate a lot of them, they were highly processed, I ate the Milo cereal every now and then, it was the only cereal I liked, probably because it had a lot of sugar in it. And then all my other foods, I'd make sure I put a ton of barbecue or tomato sauce on it just to add the extra sugar. So what happened between about 15 and 20 years of age? I was about 15 years old when I first managed to lose a little bit of weight. I remember I just kind of went by the whole eat less, move more. So my mum bought me a treadmill, which I was very lucky. So I'd, when I get home from school, I'd jump on that for maybe an hour, jog a little bit. I'd make sure I counted my calories and I ate less. and. I managed to lose five kilos, which was good. And I was like, yes, I've lost some weight. But by the time I turned 16, that five kilos, it came back on, plus about another five, because I was very hungry. I tried the Monday diet. I remember so many times I was like, all right, Monday, I'm going to start. And some people lasted till Tuesday doing the Monday diet. I, I lasted till Monday night. Pretty much by Monday night, I was like, stuff this. Food, where are you? I'm just going to eat all of it. I tried lowering my fats and I got fatter. A funny story about that is I used to buy a lot of fruit and I'd eat it thinking it was healthy and if I ate it, I'd lose weight. So I'd get two apples, eat them, then half an hour later, I'd be hungry. So I might have two oranges and I'd be hungry again half an hour later. So I might have five mandarins and then just a little bit after that, I might have two mangoes and then maybe half a massive watermelon just to finish it off because it just didn't fill me up. I tried playing a lot of sport and I was playing tennis two or three times a week, playing soccer, training. All I found was I just got hungrier and it led to me eating more. Just after my 18th, I did manage to lose some weight. I kind of read some bodybuilding forums and whatnot and I increased my protein quite a bit and lowered my calories, but it did come back. I remember probably a little bit after my 18th, I started going out, drinking alcohol with my mates and stuff, and that was no good because my weight increased. And also we went on a trip to Hawaii, which was fun. And I was like, ooh, there are all those American foods that we don't have here. So I just kind of went crazy on them. I love my burgers and stuff. So I ate like a proper American with my unlimited glass of Coke and my kilo of fries. And when I started there, I was like, ooh, I can just barely finished this and then by the end I was eating the nice big serves and then a nice really big dessert to go with it. So I think I made a record, I put on 10 kilos in 10 days. <laughs> but finally some success. After putting on even more weight and getting to over 110 kilos, I didn't even really bother weighing myself at that point. Um, the photo where I'm overweight there, that's actually at my 18th birthday. Um, I was about 110 kilos there. And what I did was I found the paleo diet and I heard for weight loss to stick to the lower range of carbs. So I was eating about 60 or less grams of carbs a day, all from 
vegetables only. I was eating a lot of eggs and I found that that was a lot more filling and within just six months I lost over 33 kilos. This was um, at the point where I had just lost a little bit of weight, but my, I ran to a friend who's a personal trainer, his name's Eros, he works out at Adonis Fitness, and he got me to take some photos. I was like, uh, uh, I'm covering my face with the camera and I'm hiding because I don't really want to take a photo, but um, I was really lucky because I started going to the gym, started working out really hard, and I think it helped accelerate my weight loss. And as you can see in the other photo, I had some muscle mass afterwards because I think standard diets that people go on, especially really heavily calorie restricted ones, they lose a lot of muscle mass and they become like skinny fat, which obviously some people, they end up just not being as healthy as what they were before because they lost all their muscle mass. So at least I put some muscle on. So that's a good part. Now I've had a little bit of a bumpy road since and I'll go through that now. Oh, wait, I forgot about this slide, sorry. Um, so yeah, the health improvements on a low carb, high fat diet. Um, obviously my weight loss, which you saw, my high blood pressure went down. I had fatty liver disease and that completely went, even though some days I was eating over 100 grams of saturated fat. I had a lot better digestion. I had no more constipation. I used to remember some days I'd go to the bathroom maybe every third day. I had much better cholesterol profile. My HDL went from 0 0.9 to now 1.66. My triglycerides, which were high, went from 1.7 to 1.0. I have an autoimmune disease, um, which is psoriasis, and I found that changing what I ate has helped it a lot. My energy is much better. I have much stable energy and I don't have to eat every two to three hours. Like today I haven't eaten yet just because I haven't had time and I feel perfectly fine and I'm not moody or angry. My fasting glucose, it was never bad, but it's improved and gotten better. But one of the big things I did get run was my fasting insulin and that's come right down to a very optimal level. So what mistakes have I made since? I decided to do bodybuilding and I read some information, I wouldn't, some of it was good, I wouldn't really recommend it, especially for someone with my history. Um, I was told they needed cycling carbs to build muscle, you don't need to. Um, but I did build a lot of muscle, I was training really hard, so I built eight kilos of muscle, that's from different DEXA scans that I got done, um, that's where dual energy um, radiation, so it's very accurate. Um, within one year of lifting weights, however, all the extra carbs and crap foods and extra calories, even if they were healthy, just eating way too much, I gained nine kilos of fat along with it. What I found with this though, was that cheap meals or cheap days, they just simply didn't work for me. The way I like to put it is, if you have an alcoholic of 20 years who's been drinking a lot of alcohol and you take him off alcohol and he's recovered as an alcoholic for six months, and then you say to him, all right, you need to have a balanced alcohol intake Every week, you can have six bottles of beer. What happens? He turns back into an alcoholic and probably drinks a slab a day. Um, the other thing that I found was I had some major emotional stress happen in the year, just something uh, quite personal, which I think did play a role because it made me a little bit depressed. Um, and also, a little bit after that, I had exams on and I had a couple of stressful subjects, so I kind of did the whole procrastination and just ate food. <laughs> Um, I think one of the biggest issues I had was I never really tracked my ketones. I just kind of winged it and thought, oh yeah, you know, kind of eating high fat, low carb, should be all right. I had a lot of keto friendly foods, which like, I guess they're all right in small amounts, but if you have a keto friendly food and just say it has 10 grams of carbs per 100 grams and you eat 500 grams or more, your carbs count up. If it's something very high in calories and you can eat a lot of it because it's very tasty, then you get back to that problem just eating too much, um, which brings me into eating too many calories. I know some days I ate four, five, six thousand calories, and I thought, oh, yeah, you know, unlimited fat won't make you fat. Well, it can, especially if you don't listen to your hunger signals, which I think is very important. Also, getting your protein balance right. 
if you have too little, I don't think it's any good because you then start tapping into your lean muscle mass and you don't want to lose that. And too much, I found, would make me hungry, which is counterintuitive to what a lot of people think, but it might just be from either gluconeogenesis or just the protein, it's getting in competition with the ketones, so energy is not as great. I injured my back while um, doing some yoga, out of all things. <laughs> I overstretched and I kind of just, I stopped training at the gym because my back was sore and I just kept eating the same amount of food which meant no lean mass gain and just fat gain. But some good news, I bought a glucometer slash blood ketone meter. It's the one that's pictured up there in the corner. Since I've had it, my blood sugar's never gone over 5.6, so I don't know why they're putting pictures up with 5.8 on it. <laughs> But um, yeah, you can get one of these. I just got it from uh, Priceline's 30 bucks, probably best 30 bucks I've spent. Um, I found some hidden carbs in foods, even though they're paleo friendly or organic from farmer's market. Um, sometimes you actually, if you're very carb sensitive like myself, you need to really read into a lot of the labels and they might have some hidden carbs and that could be putting you on a bit of a blood sugar roller coaster. Last month, I, that's around the same time I got my blood gluco glucometer and started measuring my blood ketones and my blood glucose and I've stuck to a good range of protein. Once I kind of got all that sorted and I just stuck to my diet, no more cheat days, I lost four and a half kilos just last month. Um, I started seeing an osteo who's been really, really good and my back's nearly at 100%. I can start adding weights and hopefully getting back to really heavy squats, which I love doing. The other thing I found as well is that cheese and nuts, I used to just overeat on them. I'd get a handful of nuts and without realising it, I'd have a whole bag or I'd eat some cheese. And um, what I found with the glucometer is actually cheese increases my blood sugar, which was interesting, which I think was driving hunger as well. So it's really good to test and test. Non-diet factors, I think these are really important, maybe even more important than diet alone. I think stress can lead to weight gain, especially for me, I've never really been a stressful person, but one thing that I've realised is that when I do get stressed, I counter that by eating and not really stress out in other ways. Poor sleep, I used to just go on the computer until really late and then have to wake up early for work or whatever. My injury kind of just played with me a little bit and because I wasn't training as hard. Then I mentally convinced myself that I could eat carbs. I can't really think it feels like a rebellion, like oh, I've done six months and you know now that I've lost this weight I can have a cheat meal or I can have a treat, like a lot of people will say oh I follow this kind of diet and I eat well six days a week and then I have my cheat day, it, yeah. M me convincing myself doing that wasn't a good idea because I also convinced myself that it was all going to muscle but it wasn't. Uh, when I lost the weight I didn't give my body enough time to heal itself. What I did was I thought, okay, I've lost the weight, I can start going to the gym, I can start eating more, but I think if you are very obese and you lose a lot of weight, you have to kind of stay in that range and allow your liver to heal, your other organs to heal, and just let your body just do its thing and kind of come in its own pattern, otherwise it'll just try and get back to where it was. So I also didn't lose enough weight before my so-called bulking, um, really, if I was going to go into a very high calorie diet after dieting to put on muscle mass, I should have actually gone leaner and, as I said before, let my body kind of find its own rhythm and heal up. Non-diet factors that I think are helping a lot with my weight loss is I've hacked my sleep. My parents think I'm crazy because I've got five meters of LEDs uh, control for remote and at night time, all my computer screens, all the blue lights go down on them. I change my strip of LEDs to red, so I have a big red room. <laughs> um, I'm trying to keep stress down, so I've just been working on a couple of different ways or just putting it into other forms and dealing, it with, dealing with it that way rather than dealing with it to eat a whole heap of food. Cold therapy, I've read a little bit from a couple of different people. Uh, Jack Cruz is really good information source. So I started having cold showers, which were really painful at first, but I've actually come to enjoy them now. And also, 
I started, uh, I get a big bowl of water and I fill it with ice and water, dunk my head into it and see how long I can last and just get better and better. And it's actually helped like weirdly with my hay fever as well, which is crazy. Uh, giving blood, I know not really many people talk about this, but when I was reading into a couple of different things, I found that people who give blood, they're normally a lot healthier and it allows your body to, if you have extra iron, it allows you to remove that, making new blood cells, it's very healthy for you and also you're helping other people, so you kind of feel that gratitude of helping other people, which is always good and good for your mind. And also it burns 500 calories, <laughs> which, <laughs> I don't know, if you count calories still, then you can say, oh yeah, I'm gonna go give blood to burn some calories, but I recommend that everyone gives blood because it's a really good thing and if you have the right mindset behind it, it'll help you out a lot. I've been going on slow walks, especially just while the sun's been out, just trying to get my vitamin D levels up. And I've been finding that's very relaxing and just kind of clears my mind and just lets all the busyness and different information with everything just kind of settle down and I can just be at peace, which is good. The mental benefits of a ketogenic diet, and also I've been playing around some supplements. <laughs> um, I found that being on a ketogenic diet has helped me greatly at uni. I've gone from a student who kind of didn't really concentrate, especially if I had a lecture after lunch, I'd just you know, have a bread roll or something and then an hour or two later I'd be gnawing around or I'd probably just leave and go home and make some more food. Whereas now I'll actually stay there, I'll concentrate. My like mind, it's not foggy or anything. I can just see clearly, which is just a massive difference to the diet that I was on before and my results have shown it. My last semester I've gone from being a pass or even failing a couple of subjects to getting all credits and distinctions. In the morning I've been adding MCT oil to my coffee. I'm sure some people have heard of Bulletproof coffee so I put butter and MCT oil in it which it just the extra ketones from the MCT oil just gives that little mental boost I find in the morning and sometimes I get a bit over energetic but it's always a good thing. Also with that coffee, what I've experimented with is adding l which is a nootropic. Uh, what a nootropic is, it's a supplement that helps enhance your brain function. And the difference between a nootropic and a smart drug is that a nootropic has no side effects, whereas a smart drug, there's a massive list of side effects, especially pharmaceutical ones. Um, so this one here is just an amino acid, it's just protein, so it's very, fairly safe. It's helped me a lot. I have this really hard engineering subject. I actually just did the exam of, of it on Thursday. And I um, failed that in the past, but my mid-semester exam, I got 100% on it. <laughs> so if you want to find me, um, I'm just on Facebook. You can just add me. That's my name there. It's also on the program on Low Carb Down Under. So fr feel free to add me. Um, I'm also really active on about three Facebook groups, Keto Games, that's aimed, I started that up just because I was a bit sick of some people in some other groups kind of talking really poor nutrition, saying it was all right to eat you know, two, three hundred grams of snakes because apparently all carbs are the same. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that person, I think he had a bit of brain fog. So Keto Games, if you're interested in going to the gym and lifting weights, I've run that group and I've got one of the admins who he's been in a ketogenic diet state for 10 years and he's huge and he doesn't have carbs, unlike people might tell you that you need carbs to do high intensity exercise or weight training. This guy is steroid free, massive and he's just a machine running on ketones. Also the Melbourne Paleo group, that's really good, I'm always really active on there. Um, they've been a really good resource for me to find real food in my area. And also Optimal Ketogenic Living, that's a really big group. Um, and there's plenty of good information and science around there. And you might see me running around the camera. I have my own little business on the side of everything else that I do. It's called Loro Photography. So feel free to search that and like it on Facebook. And yeah, thanks for listening to me.